Hello, and welcome to the Registry Partners September 2020 coding break. My name is Carrie Vita, and I am the Quality and Education Director. Um, I do want to extend my gratitude to everyone attending the presentation live today. I do appreciate you calling in um, and taking the time to join. Like Courtney said, um, the presentation is going to be recorded as normal and it will be available on our YouTube channel as of next week. Um, please subscribe to our Coding Break channel and you will receive a monthly alert once it is posted. Okay. Okay, I'm going to go over the objectives for today's presentation. It is to review two new notes for coding the data field grade pathological from the 2021 grade up. I do want to emphasize, however, that I am nearly touching the surface with all the grade changes for 2021. I chose to focus on two new notes specific for grade pathological, but there are additional new notes and specific grade table clarifications. So please keep that in mind and please refer to all the notes within the site-specific schemas. There is a banner on the SEER RSA, the extent of disease data, that you may have likely have noticed, which does say, although version 2.0 is available, you should use version 1.7 until the 2020 reported year submissions are complete and you receive your software updates. You may use the grade updates now with caution as the new updated notes they will not be present within your registry software until the software updates. Okay, beginning, this is a new note too for when there is a preferred grading system for a site schema. I'm using the prostate schema in this example. The new note states when there is a preferred grading system for the schema and the clinical grade uses the preferred grading system but the pathological grade does not use the preferred grading system, we cannot record the clinical grade within the grade pathological field. We assign the grade pathological using the generic grade codes A through D if the case does apply. So in this example, we have a prostate biopsy that is positive for a Gleason 3 plus 4 equals 7 adenocarcinoma, and the prostatectomy states poorly differentiated adenocarcinoma. The clinical grade is coded to a 2 for a Gleason score of 7 with the patterns of 3 plus 4, and this is the preferred grading system for prostate. The grade pathological is coded to a C for poorly differentiated. We cannot use the clinical grade within the grade pathological field since a different grading system was used, but we may assign C for poorly differentiated since codes A through D are available within the prostate schema grade table. And here is a copy of the prostate grade table where you can see the codes um, A through D are listed here. Okay, and this is a colon and rectum example with exactly the same note. But in this example, we have a colon biopsy that is positive for poorly differentiated adenocarcinoma and the hemicolectomy states high-grade adenocarcinoma. We assign code 3 for the clinical grade, which is poorly differentiated, and this is the preferred grading system for colon. For grade pathological, this would be assigned a code 9. We cannot use clinical grade for pathological grade since it is a different grading system, and the generic grade categories do not apply to this grade table. If you look at the straight table, this is a copy of the colon and rectum, and there are no A through D options within the straight table. If the A through D options are not included, we cannot use the generic grade category table. Okay, next is the behavior or surgical resection note. This is note nine for the breast schema, but it may be a different note number for a different site schema. For example, it is note seven for prostate. So beginning with the behavior component of this note, you may use the grade from the clinical workup from the primary tumor when the tumor behavior for the clinical and pathological diagnosis are the same and the clinical grade is the highest grade. So both are invasive or both are in site two. And then the second bullet, Instruction states, you may use the grade from the clinical workup from the primary tumor 
within the grade pathological when the tumor behavior from the clinical diagnosis is invasive and the tumor from the pathological diagnosis is in situ, but you cannot do the opposite. So let's walk through two examples using the second bullet um, with the behavior instructions. In the first example, we have a breast biopsy positive for invasive ductal carcinoma, Nottingham grade three, and the lumpectomy is positive for low grade BCIS. The clinical grade would be coded to a code three for Nottingham grade three, which is preferred for breast. There's only in situ on the surgical lumpectomy specimen. There's no invasive. You may use the clinical grade of Nottingham grade three from the invasive tumor to code grade pathological. But remember, you can't do the opposite. So in the second example, you have a breast biopsy, which, which is positive for high nuclear grade three DCIS, and then the lumpectomy is positive for invasive ductal carcinoma with Nottingham grade three. So the clinical grade is H for high grade for the in situ, and the grade pathological would be actually three for the Nottingham grade three. And again, with the rule, you cannot use the clinical in situ grade for grade pathological. Now, if the lumpectomy specimen did not contain a grade for the invasive, then it would be coded to nine for unknown. The second concept to this note is the surgical resection, which is actually very similar to our current note two with one addition. You may use the grade from the clinical workup from the primary tumor within the grade pathological field when there is a surgical resection of the primary tumor and there is no grade documented or no residual, or, and then here is the new instruction, when a resection has not been done, but there is microscopic confirmation of a distant MET during the clinical time frame. And if you think about this, um, in this situation, you would be assigning a pathological M1 for AJCC staging. So let's review an example. Um, we have a patient with a lung mass on CT consistent with malignancy. The PET identified a mass in the right lower lobe and right superior renal mass is suspicious for malignancy. A CT guided biopsy of the right lung mass is positive for moderately differentiated adenocarcinoma. And the right kidney needle core biopsy was positive for adenocarcinoma consistent with the lung primary. The patient then was referred to medical and radiation oncology. So the grade clinical is a code two for mod diff, and we may use the clinical grade of two in the grade pathological field because although no resection of the primary site was performed, we do have a positive microscopic confirmation of distant MET during that clinical time frame. So just in summary with that, if a patient does not have a resection of the primary tumor, but the patient has great information from the biopsy of the primary tumor, and the patient has pathological confirmation of a distant MET, then we may use the clinical grade to code the pathological, um, the grade pathological data item. Okay, just some final thoughts. Please read the grade notes. The numbers have changed, so don't rely on your memory. And the note numbers, they can and they are different per the site schema. We still have to be mindful, of, however, of the priority rules for grade, which are based on histology. Uh, also keep in mind the grade pathological timeframe where surgical, surgical resections of the primary site are required with that new exception now of when there is positive um, confirmation of distant METs during the clinical time frame. Use the generic grade table when they apply, uh, and this would involve when the preferred grade system was not documented for the site, plus um, when the site-specific grade table includes the A through D codes and the grade description is listed. Continue to use your version 1.7 until the 2020 reporting year submissions are complete. And there is a free NACER presentation recording on the 2021 grade update if you have the opportunity to view. Uh, I have provided this link 
and it does include a Q&A document and then a quick reference guide for using the generic grade category table. Uh, thank you for your attention. This does conclude um, this presentation and I appreciate um, everyone joining. Thank you.